Hey, this is Jesse Canton. Man, I am so glad that you took the time to download this podcast. Listen, it's getting ready to be a blessing to you. It is power packed full of wisdom. Listen, as you hear this episode and you maybe you want to be a blessing to this podcast, well, you can hit me up on Cash App. Type in Jesse E. Canty, J-S-S-E, the letter E, C-A-N-T-Y, with the dollar sign, of course. And you can be a blessing. Anything you give will be appreciated. I thank you, and I pray that nothing but God blessings and his best be upon you. Take care. Hey, this is Jesse Cantor with another episode of How Bad Do You Want It? I came to talk to the people who are sitting on the bench. That's right, man. I mean, you sitting there with your pom-poms, cheering everybody else on, but you ain't doing nothing yourself. And you know that you are full of destiny, but you're also full of excuses. (laughs) Yeah, man, I want to talk about this episode. It's going to get good. I want to entitle this one, Just Do It. Let's talk about it. Yeah, man. Man of wisdom, man of wisdom. From the pulpit to the podcast, from the pulpit to the podcast, to the podcast, yeah. Jesse Canty. Pursuing my destiny. Pursuing my Hey, 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 welcome to another episode of How Bad Do You Want It? I am your host, Jesse E. Canty. Man, I'm excited about this episode. I don't forgot what number it is. I'll catch you on the next one. But I know what I got to say, man. So let's get into this thing and let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to discuss this word that you have given me. I pray right now that it be impactful and it also be effective, God that will encourage us to pursue our destiny and please you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of How Bad Do You Want It? Man, I'm going to stick with my theme on this one. I'm borrowing from Nike's page. Nike have a slogan, man, that's entitled, Just Do It. Now, just for a little bit, you know, I don't want to go way back, but uh, in too deep into this, but the word Nike is also in your Bible. It's used as the word victory. Nike means victory and Nick, Nick, N-I-K-E, but it's pronounced Nike, I believe in the Hebrew or Greek one of them. I can't remember, uh, but it's, it's interpreted as victory. <laughs> Understand that in life, if you pursue your destiny, then you will have pursued or you would have uh, uh, begin to achieve Nike victory, completion, success. Now, again, let's tear down this thing that what is it that makes your life su- successful? The world would tell you to have a lot of money. The world will tell you to be successful. You will have to be known, popular, living in a big house with five cars, et cetera. All of that dream, that stuff that that, that the enemy gives us to make us chase things instead of chasing your destiny. But the truth of the matter is, as I said over and over, and I want to make sure the people listening, so you're not getting motivated to chase things instead of, Pursuing my destiny. It's about your destiny. Your destiny is the thing that you was created to do. Your destiny is the thing, the assignment that God have you here. I don't have time to get deep in this thing, but I hope that you understand you didn't beat out the millions of other sperm cells just to have a new car. You did not beat out the millions of sperm cells to be here just to have some money in the bank. Man, no. God has an intention for you and a purpose for you that is greater than you. Do you believe that? That's the reason why I'm driven to get out of my bed and do this podcast every time he impregnate me with it. Because I'm not getting paid for this. Rather get any type of donation. And that's fine. He didn't call me to do this to get rich. He called me to do this because this is my purpose. 
If I can help one person that I have, uh, uh, I have been become successful in the eyes of God, which counts more than anybody at the end of the day. But the problem is that when God shows us our assignment or begin to reveal to us and none of us know everything, we're living day by day, moment by moment. We're taking it step by step, which is also going to uh, 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 encompass faith. You have to walk by faith, not by sight. You understand that. But you have to also be committed or focused on the end goal. What drives you? And that's why you have to stay focused this way because you are driven by something. And a lot of people buckle your seatbelts are driven by fear. I mean, the enemy messing with your mind. Uh, even before you played this podcast, you he was already telling you how you don't have the money to do what you got to do or want to do or feel led to do. So many people go places, whether you're in a beauty salon, whether you're in a barber shop, whether you're hanging with your boys or whatever it is, it's a bunch of jibber jabber. We understand. We have a good time. We can in, in, in engage in, in playful sports talking and stuff, et cetera. But let me tell you something. There's an enemy lurking amongst you, and his whole design is to blind you from your purpose. His whole design is to call your 38 years, your 58 years of living to be empty, to be uh, uh, accomplished less. And I know that ain't a word, but you get what I mean. To make you not be successful, to not do what you was created to do. And isn't it bad? I heard Muhammad Ali say, if a man live 50 years, and I'm paraphrasing, if a man live 50 years and he is the same person he was at 20, then he wasted 30 years of living. If you haven't grown in life, if you're still doing the same dumb things, if we're still doing stuff that is not pursuing us towards our destiny, that's not making us no better, that's not making your family no better, that's not making your finances no better, that's not improving your living, that you, you mean to tell me that you still see life. I'm talking to somebody. You mean to tell me that you still see see life the same way at 40 that you then you saw it at 18? That means you did not grow. You have failed to grow. At some point of time, uh you got to start to mature mentally, spiritually, and you'll get back to a place. I know when we're young, dumb, and full of nothing but fun thoughts. <laughs> But I'm telling you, man, these fun thoughts is really distractions that will cause us to some of us die young and never even think about their destiny. When you start to pursue your destiny, you start changing in life. You start getting older. This is how you know you're getting older. It has nothing to do with how many candles are on your cake. It has nothing to do with how much money is in your bank account. It's when you start to see life different than you did when you was 18. When you start to become uh, 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 more aware on what you have to do before you leave this earth. And man, when you start thinking like that, boy, you a bad motor scooter now. Now you're cranking up that or uh, that engine. Now you're beginning to fan them flames that's called destiny inside of you. And you know it's something that you was created to do. And then you got everybody got dreams. He reveals your purpose in dreams. He reveals your purpose through podcasts. He reveals your pur- purpose through books. He reveals your purpose through seeing somebody else do something great and it all and all of a sudden it wakes up your baby it wakes up something down inside of you that says wait a minute you've always wanted to do this and you know you could do it but you got too many excuses on why you can't do it stay with us we'll be right back Hey, thank you for taking the time to listen to this podcast God has blessed us to have listeners all around the world And I thought to myself, I said, maybe there's somebody that wants you to have a prayer request. I want you to pray with them concerning anything, your family or whatever it is. If that's be so, listen, drop me an email at jessecantypodcast at yahoo.com. J-S-S-E-C-A-N-T-Y podcast at yahoo.com. I would love to hear from you. I love to pray with you. And I want you to have a blessed day. Mo 
Moses was given a, his destiny and his assignment at the burning bush. If you ever take time and begin to read the Bible, you'll see that God gave Moses an awakening moment where he saw something that caught his attention, which was a bush that was on fire that was not being consumed or slash burnt up. God will use something in life to draw your attention. Then all of a sudden, God's begin to speak out of the bush. God can speak to you out of your depression. God can speak to you out of your wreck, car wreck that you had. God can speak to you out of the, the, the tormenting adversity moment that you're in now. You can hear God speaking to you. The problem is the enemy wants you to be deaf. And when you're deaf, there is what's, what, what's worse than being deaf and can't hear? Being deaf and can't read signs. Sign language. Don't you know life will throw it speak to you using sign language? If you can't hear somebody speaking to you, if you can't hear God speaking to you, he will use signs. Some of them can be uh, appeared coming in bad news. God is trying to get your attention and saying, quit talking yourself out of your assignment. Quit giving yourself full all these excuses. And I said it at the beginning, you better hear me what I'm not saying, <laughs> but I'm implying you, if, if I had to say it my way and forgive me, you are full of excuses. Because excuses is mountains of meaningless nothing that you have convinced yourself of the lie that you ain't got what it takes. And let me tell you something, buddy. You got what it takes to do what God told you to do. You got it in the gas tank, but you don't want to put your foot on the metal and let it roar. That means drive, baby. That means do what you're supposed to do. Are you driven in life? Or are you coasting in life? Do you know how many people are on the highway coasting? Man, I want to be that joker to jumping from the left lane, lane to the right lane. I got a destination in mind. And you know what I be, you know what I love to do? Maybe I'm the only one. I like to set my navigation on a certain place where I'm going. And it says that you'll be there by 830. Well, now my whole objective is to be there by 829. My whole objective is to be that time because I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to do what I got to do. I'm going to cut, cut whenever I can instead of extending my time instead, let me break it down in case you understand me. Instead of being denied, instead of being delayed, let me be faithful and God can speed up my time and therefore I can accomplish my purpose and live a good life too. A good long life. Just do it. That was a slogan that Nike came up with because they knew that people were going to talk themselves out of doing what they were created to do because fear will grip you. And the Bible says, that's the old preacher, man, says in Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 in the ESV version, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us, that means since a lot of people in this context now, <clears throat> let me say this, when I used to hear this scripture, let me read it to you first. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin that, that, uh, that easily besets us. King, <clears throat> excuse me, King James Version. But this version says, which clings so closely and let us run with endurance or patience the race that is set before us. And the Apostle Paul was saying, listen, man, we have people that have been before us that can encourage us. When you don't have anybody to encourage you or uh, the enemy come telling you what you can't do and all this stuff, he's saying, and if you read this in Hebrews chapter 12, uh, you'll see Hebrews chapter 11 laid out and called out those witnesses. It called out Noah. It called out Abraham. It called out Moses. It called out these people. These are the witnesses he's talking about. Look at the lives of these great men. Or, and maybe you, you uh, need more than just Noah, Abraham, or Moses. Maybe you can look at the life of somebody else, your friend who is pursuing their destiny. Or maybe you can look at the life of your father, your mother, or your uncle, or somebody that you know and become inspired. I'm sitting here looking at a picture uh, of Michael Jordan. <clears throat> 
a plaque that my wife uh, gave me for one of my uh, birthdays or something, man. And because she know I love Michael Jordan. I love him so much that I named my son Jordan. Now, I, that is not my idol. Why do I like Mike? Because Mike is driven to win. Yeah, man. Mike is driven to win. Mike said on the last day, he said, if you don't want to play that way, that's you. He said, if you think I'm wrong, that's you. He said, because that's because you ain't never won nothing. Now, I'm not saying the man is right spiritually. But what sets Mike apart is he wants to win by any means necessary. And he liked to do it by the rules. So he's driven. So I use Mike, but what I'm trying to tell you, sometimes I use Mike as a encouraging person or encouraging force to, to inspire in spirit, inspire me. Cause my spirit man to be renewed or rejuvenated or rekindled to do what I need to do. That's what the Hebrews is saying here. If you look in the scripture, you can use people. You can use Noah. You can use Abraham. You can use Moses. But it ain't nothing like using somebody that you see uh, in your life as well. Because these people that we never met. He says, look at them. He says, looking unto Jesus, the author, or in this version, the founder and perfecter, the author or finisher of your faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross? What was the cross? It was a lot of things, but in the context I'm talking now, it is the thing that challenged Jesus the most. How? So what this verse is really saying, he's saying that the way Jesus endured the whipping, the way Jesus endured the carrying of the cross, which was excruciating to him. If you ever thought about uh, it's not being, uh, if you ever thought about what in the world that you can have an assignment that challenge every blood vessel you have in your body, I would say it had to be Jesus enduring the cross. I believe, I mean, we've seen the, the picture uh, I can't remember what it was, but 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 I think I forgot who it was. Mel Gibson picture. When we see the Passion of Christ, we seen the Passion of Christ and saw what we can imagine, what Christ endured. Do you understand these things that you know? <clears throat> I'm sorry. These things that you got to know that it cost him everything he had to endure it. And the Bible said that the way he endured endured it he focused on what was set before him he focused on what he was doing and what his assignment was likewise my brother and my sister this is how you get past the days when you want to sit back and chill kick up your feet and do nothing these are the this is how you get past these days when you want to cruise through life and never and stop pursuing your destiny and start to grab your pom poms. See, that's the problem. Too many of us got out of pom poms talking about gold, Brad, gold, De uh, Deborah. I believe in you. We can comment on everybody else's posts. We can encourage everybody else, but you can't encourage yourself because you have talked yourself out of while of the of uh, of the focus or the mindset uh, to make a decision to do what you are called to do it's good to encourage everybody else but can you encourage yourself so he says we got clouds of witnesses we can just look up and begin to look around us and see from the life of Noah and Abraham and Moses just using these three how it can encourage you to do what you got to do you got to understand that life is a marathon and it's not a sprint most marathons are somewhere, I know, give or take, but they're somewhere around, let's say, 26 miles to maybe you can run the marathon of life that may not be 26 miles. Maybe yours going to be a half a mile. That race will take them on a long, open road when you run that marathon. And that marathon usually ends up in a stadium full of witnesses, which is cheering fans. This is how life is. You don't know how long your race is. 26 years, 36 years, 86 years. And don't you know some people have died in 16 years? Everybody ain't guaranteed to run the same race. We don't know how long you got here on earth. I don't know how long I got here. 
That's why I'm driven to do every episode. Because when it's time for me to go, and I pray that's 100 years from now with health in my body, but whenever God called for me, I'm going to leave as many episodes as I can to make sure my impact is still felt here on earth long after I'm gone. So the average runner who runs a marathon, they say takes over four and a half hours. In real life, we don't know how long it takes, but we do know even right now, tick, tock, tick, tock, it don't stop. Time don't wait for no man. What am I trying to tell you? You're getting old, man. <laughs> You getting old even as we speak right now, which means you don't have time to waste. Let's start with Noah. Look at Noah. Noah, when you wonder if your life really counts, Noah lived all of those years and Noah began to look around and realize, wait a minute. Look at society and what's going on. And God gave Noah an assignment, just like God gave you an assignment. Now, if you ain't listening to the assignment of God <clears throat> and you're full of ambition, ambition can be a good thing and it be a bad thing. I'm using it in the context of a bad thing, which means you got so much drive in you. You driven to succeed just to show off. You driven to succeed just to get a bunch of substance. And I want to talk to the people who are driven to succeed because of that candle, that flame that's burning inside of you. You ain't trying to be the richest man, but your doggone sure ain't trying to be the poorest either. You want to live good. You want to do all that stuff, but you got, you got more in your life than just chasing a bag. You chasing that place of completion. You chasing that feeling that what God says, well done, thy good and faithful servant. That's the thing that drives me, that causes me to make a decision to leave the pulpit for the podcast. Not because I'm upset with church, but because I feel driven to do what I'm called to do. And I don't care who don't like it. That's the way you got to be. You don't have to have a bunch of people clapping and says, go Hercules, do what you got to do and don't allow yourself to talk yourself out of doing it. And you better do it with faithfulness and urgency. Noah lived over 950, he lived to be 950 years old. It ain't how long you live, it's how you live. Noah's life, one person life, your life can make a difference. I got a foundation that I'm, I need to get back to building up. I, I got a foundation. It's still legit. I just need to get back to build. It's called the MAD Foundation. It means that MAD is an acronym for making a difference. At the end of the day, I don't want to hear everybody say how much money I got or what accomplishments I did. I want to know, did my life make a difference to somebody? Noah lived 950 years, man. His righteousness saved humanity from extinction. When you go to Genesis chapter six and just read that whole chapter, you realize that the condition of the world that Moses was living in at that time, it was terrible. The Lord saw evil that was great in the earth, man. And everybody thought was on was in their hearts was just to do evil continually. Well, that sound like now. <laughs> we understand that Moses made a difference to his family. When Moses did what he was called to do, he made a difference to his future generation. I mean, Moses ensured that his seed would live on because of what he did. I'm trying to tell you two things. One, don't be afraid to stand out in the crowd. What Moses called to do, they was mocking him and laughing at him because they never seen it done before. Don't you know you can do stuff that nobody ever seen done before? You are the author of your own life and your actions and your pens. That's writing on the pages of life, what you do. Number two, don't be afraid to do something for the first time. I ain't got time to get into it, but that's what Moses did. The next one is Abraham. Abraham, example of life, and you got to read it, understand. He, when you don't understand what God is telling you to do, he is similar to Noah 
as a faithful father, but this man, Abraham, is a father of multitude, an exalted father, exalted father. That's what his name means. This man is a, has a close and personal, he was a close and personal friend of God. But his testimony is this. God always does the right thing, even if it takes a long time. This is for the people who feel like God has been uh, slacking on fulfilling what he said he was going to do for you. He's going to do the right thing. Don't you put God on your time schedule. You just got to do what you're supposed to do. He always does the right thing, even if it sounds crazy. God told Abraham that he was going to have a baby and his wife who had a dead womb was going to have a baby at 99. Do you understand that God will still use you and fulfill what he said he was going to do, even though your back is hurting and your knees is cracking? Another reason is this. God always does the right thing, even if you question him. Noah questioned the will of God or what the work of God when it came down to Sodom and Gomorrah. Maybe you got questions. Maybe you don't know what tomorrow holds. Maybe you don't know who's supposed to help you. Maybe you don't really know what you're supposed to do. That's all right. Ask God. Any man lack wisdom, the Bible says, let him ask of God. God will give it to you. He'll use somebody to speak something that will cause you to be inspired or encouraged and show or enlightened. Now you know what you got to do. Last thing with Abraham, God always does the right thing, even if we don't understand. God told Abraham to offer up his only son. I'm sure that my Abraham said, wait a minute, you just gave me my son. Now you want me to kill him and offer him up for you? He did it even though he didn't understand the purpose of that or the purpose of his life. And all of a sudden, God revealed it through his obedience. Uh-oh, whoop, there it is. I done said something. You cannot understand your destiny if you do not walk in obedience. There are some things God just wants you to do, even though you don't know how you're going to pay for it. Ah, I said something, man. There are some things that God wants you to do, even though you don't know who's going to help you. There are some things that God wants you to do, even if you don't know the people that can help get you there. Just do it. God will envelop or, or envelop. God will reveal who he has signed to help you as you walk in obedience. Last person is Moses. Moses was the one that shows you a fearful runner, a reluctant runner. This runner don't look old or look weak. We don't, we look like we can get it done. But the problem, Moses questioned himself. Moses at times was afraid to step out on faith. Moses had to leave the safe zone and dwell in the faith zone. Who am I talking to? You are being called to leave your place of safety. You've been living and kicked back and you're know, living back, laying back and kicking up your feet, living in the safe zone because you don't like the feeling of living in the faith zone. Moses was hanging on the backside of the desert by him. Well, this is what we don't get. Moses stayed on the backside of the desert by himself for 40 years. You take a man who's, who's staying, who used to, who doing what he want to do and just only dealing with himself for 40 years, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he was called to lead over 2 million people. You mean to tell me this man had to make an adjustment with his life? You doggone skip it, he did. And he could have made an excuse when he did. And God was telling him the whole time, just do it, Moses. I'm writing a script to your life. What Moses' life says, you can overcome experiences of your past. Moses was born in uncertainty. Moses was born and had to be delivered through a Nile River, but he overcame the experiences of his past. Moses' life also shows that you can overcome the comforts of your presence. Leave the safe place for the, for the faith place. It's going to cost you something. You may have to save your nickels. It's going to cost you some sleep. It's going to cost you a little relaxation. You may can't go on vacation right now because you're building what God told you to do. And the last thing, you got to overcome your insecurities. Moses had a stuttering problem that we believe. But if we do know, Moses said, I cannot talk eloquently. So you may have some insecurities. 
I can't do it because I got bad credit. I can't do it because I'm shy. Man, I hear my daughter tell me that stuff sometimes. Listen, listen here, you are from you are from my seed. I made my living talking. You better get over that stuff. God called you to do what you got to do, and you better do it. I'm trying to tell you, and I hope you've been inspired by this podcast, that God told you to just do it. You got destiny ahead of you. Quit making excuses and just do it. Hey, business owners, this is Rashad Brown with SwipeFast, located in Columbia, South Carolina. We are excited to be partnering with Jesse E. Canty in the How Bad Do You Want It podcast. Since 2017, SwipeFast has been helping business owners like you save up to 99% in their debit and credit card processing fees. So if you process business to business or business to consumer payments, we have solutions that would meet your needs and would love to hear from you. You can reach us at SwipeFast.com forward slash save. That's swipe, spelled with the Y, or contact us at 1-800-597-0713. Don't forget to let us know that Jesse E. Canty sent you. Have a blessed day.